happened to my computer? Oh, here we go. Hey, good morning, uh, fire catchers. This is Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags, and we are with Rosie Bowden. She's going to be teaching us Changed by Worship, and it is Saturday, January 12th. It's the very first fire catchers of the year. Welcome, everybody. Um, let's get right into it. Rosie, I want to pray for you as you share with us. So, Father, we invite you into this time. We we expect um, to encounter you. We we expect to be changed by worship as Rosie is talking from her personal experience from the word that when we enter into your presence, which is what worship is, that we are changed. It is, it is, uh, what I love about that is that it's a given that we focus on you and our, our perspective changes. We are changed into the very likeness of the one that we are focused on. So bless our time that we would uh, be impacted and by what you have to say to us. And for those that will be watching at a later date, um, bless their watching and their moment and that you transcend time. So it doesn't even, it, it can, it can always, um, your word is always alive. And so we bless your, um, your word to us. We bless Rosie, give her focus, give her um, insight and wisdom and allow us the, just the freedom of focus to, to hear it and receive it and to allow it to be changed, uh, that we are changed by it. In Jesus name, amen. Amen. Um, first, Andrea, I, I need to clarify, I'm not sure the confusion, but my class is actually called Pastors and Our Praise. I'm not doing change by our worship. Um, so, so sorry. <laughs> that prayer was like, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify for everybody, if you're here for change by the worship, that's not yet. <laughs> no, we're doing this discussion. <laughs> She has changed by the worship on her brain. <laughs> no, this class this morning is called Pastors and Our Praise. And um, as I was praying and preparing for our Firecatchers classroom, that was the phrase that I, I really felt strongly that the Lord gave me, Pastors and Our Praise. And so what I have done with that concept is... Um, Last week, I was supposed to uh, go meet with my pastor and do a one-on-one -on -one interview to just talk to him specifically about the field of um, church and flag worship. And because primarily what was on my heart is um, so many of our fire catchers, <clears throat> whether they inbox Andrea or myself or in part of the posting, what happens is we get a lot of um, uh, just, what's the word I'm looking for? Just frustration because what do I do when my pastor won't let me worship in church? What do I do when my leadership doesn't understand? What do I do? What do I do? And so um, I think Andrea would agree. We basically just, our, our position is always submission. You just, if you're going to worship in church, in that congregational scenario, you must always do as your leadership is instructing you. And so, um, <clears throat> And so I began to ponder what, what sets, you know, what, what are the haves and the have nots as far as flag worship goes. And so anyway, um, I, I was set out to go interview my pastor, just kind of some questions that I thought some of you would have on your heart. And while I understand that he doesn't speak for every pastor out there, I think my pastor speaks um, from the heart and he, because he is a worshiper, at large, he really gets and understands that um, that calling, that perspective, that that anointing, and so I felt like he would be a really good candidate. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but this is my pastor. This is Pastor Will Connor, and um, I just texted him this morning and was asking him a couple of more questions that I forgot. And um, <clears throat> first and foremost. Um, <clears throat> My pastor has been uh, serving, he initially served as a chaplain at a juvenile facility in 1985, and he served in ministry by vocationally till 2002, and he served as a full-time pastor since 2002. He's also pastored four churches, 
ministered in several states in the U.S. and has ministered in Barbados and Mexico, South Africa and Cuba, and he's been in ministry well over 30 years, he said. And the one thing I did ask him also, as I said, um, what is your favorite part of being a pastor? And his answer to that was his relationship and walk with Jesus was his most favorite part of pastoring. So that's just a little about my pastor. Pastor Will, I just want to share my testimony and why I, um, I knew that I could come to him on all of our behalf. Um, I started going to Pastor Will's church about two years ago. And at the time, my, um, my relationship with my spouse was um, degenerating. And I was at the um, apex of mental health issues and addiction and alcohol issues in my life. I have been a flag worshiper for coming probably up on 20 years. And one of the things, even during the course of that darkness of mental health, of addiction, drugs, and alcohol, the one thing I never let go of was my flag worship. My situation got so bad that um, I was self-medicating a lot. And in early 2016, after 40 plus years of being a very well-behaved, safe driver. I never even had a speeding ticket. I had a nervous breakdown while driving my car one day, pulled over, jumped out of my car, and right in front of a state patrolman, and I was cited for um, a DUI. Um, sorry, I had to let that part pass through. <laughs> um, and as a result, I lost my driver's license for uh, six months. <clears throat> and why I share that part is because the one and only thing that I could do was I would get in my car and I would sneak up the hill by where I lived and I would go up into the mountains and I, I would worship with my flag. And that's all I would do. Even in my, um, even in my delusional state of mind, the only thing that I knew that I could do was like when David was called into play for Saul when he was having those horrible dreams and those demonic encounters. When David would come into the atmosphere where Saul was, the, the atmosphere changed. And that's, that's what was happening for me. Um, when I first started going to Pastor Will's church, our church is called Kingdom Embassy Church. Um, as I mentioned, I, I had been driving and then I lost my license and my um, ex-husband would drive me to church. And when I came into that church new, um, as a flag minister, Pastor Will had seen me in the community. I'd been to his church for different conferences, or he'd been at our, the church I was attending. And so he knew I was a flag worshiper. And when I first came in there, I was still dealing with all of these issues. Um, I was not in recovery yet. I was still using, and I um, had undiagnosed bipolar and was not medicated. So I could be manic and erratic. And, um, but I, I would come into that setting and I would try to be, behave, like really, I had to work hard at it. So when I came to church at Kingdom, I would sit in the back and I didn't bring my flags. At the time I had a few, um, Andre and I, I think originally met in 2014. So I had a few cats our worship flags, but I didn't, I wouldn't bring them to church. And so I started coming and Slowly but surely, Pastor Will, his wife, his name was Tammy, they would text me like I would come on Sunday and I would get a text from Pastor Will and he would say, Sister, if you're coming to church on Wednesday night, please bring your flags. Or Pastor Tammy would text me, Rosie, if you're coming to church on Sunday, please bring your flags. And I, because of my judgment of myself and my state of mind and my debauchery, if you will, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to touch those flags in that setting. Um, and I really, that meant a lot to me. I could take them outside, I could worship in my house, and I could go up into the mountains. And what I didn't realize was that whole six months of not having a driver's license and being able to go to church, but going up into the high places and worshiping, the anointing on my life was increasing <laughs> because I was worshiping from a place of such brokenness and pain in a high place 
that God was meeting me. And so when I would go and do that during the week, I would do it all, all week long and then go to church on Sunday. Pastor Will was seeing the anointing growing despite the fact that I was still um, not in recovery. And so slowly but surely, he began to start pulling me to the front and I was scared. And um, I, didn't, I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to worship. I didn't want to touch my flags in that setting. Finally, um, I would go back and tell the Lord, if that's really where you want me, if I'm not going to taint your glory, if I'm not going to taint the anointing that was on my life, then I will submit to my pastor because that's near and dear to my heart. That's just something I do. Sure enough, get another text. Sister Rosie, if you're going to be at church on Sunday, please. Bring your flags. And so that's sort of my testimony. Hang on, you guys, sorry. I need you to turn the TV down, Judah, please. I'm I'm online talking and I need you to be quiet. Thank you. Sorry, I've got grandchildren running them up. Um so once I took that position at the I started flagging in the back. I would just sit in the back and I would flag in the back and Slowly but surely, Pastor Will would call me to the front. He, after church, he said, could you bring your flags up here? Bring your flags up here. And that is where I stand today. Um, he, my pastor, recognized the call of the Ministry of Flags on my life. He blessed it, and he made a place for it. And he, he has a very strong gift of discernment. And I know that he could see that addiction spirit all over me. And the spirit of Jezebel as well. I know he did. But even in the midst of my mess, my, my worship was activated. My worship was changing the atmosphere. My worship was bringing forth the presence of the Lord. And he, he knew it. And he confirmed it. And so um, that's why I felt so strongly about this message, pastors and our praise. I know, at least for me, if I did not have that blessing and that covering of my pastor, the call in my life to do this um, area of worship and ministry would, would not be protected. It would not be what it is today. And I, I owe him so much. And anyway, so what I've done is I compiled a list of some questions for my pastor that I think maybe a lot of us may have, and, I, and if any of you have the opportunity to really have a really heartfelt conversation with your pastors, if you have them, about who you are in this arena, I bet you will discover, even as I did, I was a little nervous about even asking my pastors some of these questions, because, but um, I think you will discover that you, may, you are more than you know, and that what, what you do for the body of Christ in that setting um, is really powerful. So um, what I'm going to do is share my questions with you, share my pastor's answers. I didn't get a chance to do the one-on-one -on -one interview, I think I already said, because it was snowing that day. And so I emailed in my list and um, he answered them for me. And so I didn't, I don't have this big biblical teaching, but what I do, what I just want us to do is just have these dialogues and hopefully send you away today with um, a little courage or a little encouragement um, to have conversations with your pastors about, about who you are in flag worship. So the first question I sent him was, do you remember when you first experienced flag worship and what were your initial thoughts about that? He said, the first time we experienced flag worship was maybe within the last 10 years or so. However, worship with banners has been around at least as long as I've been a Christian, about 38 years or more. For me, this kind of expression in worship was more easily understood as it began to develop a more spirit-filled, intimate relationship with God and a better understanding of the whole counsel of God. I then asked him, what has been your overall opinion about flag worship in church? Um, he said, I feel that flag and banner worship represent, in a very small way, something of the pageant pageantry of expression of worship as it is in heaven itself before the throne of God. <laughs> now, I, that touches my heart <laughs> because that's 
who my pastor was able to identify me as even as I showed in my testimony, I saw myself totally in a negative derogatory setting. And he was seeing with the eyes of Jesus that I was someone in a very small way expressing the pageantry of heaven on earth as it was before the throne of God. And um, that's what made the difference in my life. I asked him, what led you to make a place for flag worship in your church? And he said, God inhabits the praises of his people. Praise has, quote, many expressions. Incorporating the arts in praise and worship is a beautiful thing when it's done as unto the Lord. Um, I asked him, have you ever had a, quote, bad experience around flag worship? And he said, of course I have. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> say that. He said, of course I have. I've been hit a couple of times as well as others. Many have obviously never been mentored for flag worship. And then I asked in conjunction with that, was it enough to change your mind or was it relevant to the flag worshiper specifically? And he said, mostly due to the ignorance on the part of the worshiper themselves. So the bad quote experience that he had that he saw others have, he was able to identify was not one bad apple spoils the whole bunch, which I know that for um, some of the fire catchers in the community and, and others as well, that somewhere out there, one bad apple spoiled the whole bunch. And that sucks, quite frankly, I'm sorry, but, but that's what I love about the heart of my pastor is that he re he's able to recognize that one bad apple doesn't spoil the whole bunch, but he does recognize and realize that it's, um, it's a very uh, valuable tool from heaven. Um, I asked, in your opinion, why might other leaders be so apprehensive about, about flag worship in church? He said, many people have various doctrinal, traditional, religious issues, as with many other points of disagreement within the body of Christ. Speaking with tongues, for example, is still very controversial in certain church circles, and flag worship is certainly to be as well. I said, do you have a protocol regulations for flag worshipers at your church? He said, not yet, but as flag worship becomes a more integral part of our worship, we will be setting protocols in place. I sort of gulped at that answer <laughs> because I, um, two, two reasons, because I know that I am a forerunner flag worshiper at our church. I think there's maybe one or two other people that worship with flags at my church, but not consistently. I'm on my post every single Sunday. Um, one of the things, for example, that happened a couple of Sundays ago at, at our church is, is pretty small. Um, but there was like three preteen little girls that uh, I had never seen at our church this particular Sunday. And they, um, we keep um, a t uh, like a bucket of uh, flags, like this stick, small stick handle flags up in the front of the church whereby I stand, and then there's a chair up there. And uh, these three girls had seen me worshiping with flags and they came up and they pulled flags out of the bucket. And it was sort of an interlude kind of during the worship, and I was sitting down, I remember, and I was taking some notes on some things that the Lord was speaking to me, and my pa pastor was sitting close by, and he leans over to me, and he got my attention, and he said, Rosie, help them, please help them, and I said, oh, cool. of course, and so I stood up, and stood in the middle of these three teen girls, and the anointing came, and they, you never know, they hadn't been doing it for weeks. And pastor later came to me, and that was actually the day that my pastor came to me, and he said, when you're ready to do another workshop, <laughs> and that was, that's how the uh, Change by Worship event came to play. Judah, shush. And so um, he said, pastor told me, he said, I saw your mantle come over those girls. And he said, everything changed in the, in the worship that, in that moment. In fact, there was an altar call. People began to come up out of their seat and praise the Lord. And I, well, I've never seen that before in a long time. And so that was really, really exciting. 
So we're getting protocols. <laughs> and, uh, and I believe that that's exciting because we want that. We want to have really good, healthy protocols. I, I don't, I'm not saying laws and, you know, but there needs to be really good, healthy protocols so people aren't getting hit and we aren't spoiling something that's really, really good. Um, oh, sorry, lost my place. Uh, what are calls? Let's see. Bad experience. Let me open it. Um, oh, I said, in your opinion, oh, I already read that one. Tons. Do you have protocol? Okay. One of the most predominant, so this is the next question I asked. One of the most predominant things that can result from flag worship, I, I asked him, is breakthrough, changing atmospheres, and prophetic release. I said, would you agree or disagree? Pastor Will said, oh, and I said, if you agree, have you experienced these events? Um, Pastor Will said, I most certainly agree that each of these, quote, spiritual realities can and should be expected. If those who are participating fulfill the criteria that Holy Spirit requires of them. So there's a partnership. He's recognizing that those of us that are, you know, congregationally, not just flag worshipers, um, we all have a part to play in that atmosphere as we're worshiping with the Lord. Um, I have 10 questions. I'm on number eight. <clears throat> I said, for someone whose leader does not see a benefit, and I put that in quote, or quote, resists, or, quote, puts restrictions on their flag worship. And I later told them the quotes are actual inquiries that we have had in our flag worship community. So I pulled those from uh, uh, flag, um, sorry, catcher, fire catcher um, comments. Um, so once again, for someone whose leader, quote, does not see a benefit, resists or puts restrictions on their flag worship, how might to best share their heart with that leader? Put her outside. Sorry. He said, it would be far better to attend a church where freedom in worship is already established. The leader sets the boundaries for the various expressions of worship in the house. If they are open to incorporate flag worship in their church, perhaps they could meet and introduce their pastor to others who have already successfully established it in their churches. I thought that was pretty amazing. To, um, I'm going to read that again. It would be far better to attend a church where freedom in worship is already established. <laughs> I, that touched me. That touched me a lot. In the flagging community, I, I said, there is, in my opinion, too much emphasis on those who get released, quote, to flag in the front or flag in the back. I asked, do you as a leader have an opinion on the whereabouts of flag worshiper stands? Pastor said, the larger the facility, the better it is for flag worshipers. It's great to share this space when possible, but the motivation for flag worship should always be as unto the Lord, not as unto men. And then, uh, oh, I said, and then I got on a personal note, I said, as my pastor, you have witnessed my flag worship experience firsthand. A, how would you conclude flag worship has contributed to my walk in the Lord? He said, it provided you an opportunity to worship God with your whole spirit, soul, and body. I asked, were you able to differentiate flag worship as a call on my life versus just something I did or tried to do on a Sunday morning? Pastor said, um, the call to worship is upon every believer. How that is expressed is what makes one unique. It just so happens that you incorporate the pageantry and creativity of flag worship as God's unique creative expression through you. And what blesses my heart, if I may just say so, is how my pastor refers to my expression as pageantry. That, that gives me an insight to um, his spiritual, what he sees in the spirit on my life. I never really even thought about it in that way. But he, in the course of this questionnaire and even in church, as I'm recalling, has oftentimes, oftentimes referred 
to um, the expression of flag worship that I bring as a pageantry, which um, tells me, like I said, that there's, there's a place that I want to, that's a place I want to pray into. That really, that gave me some wisdom, that gave me some insight. that gave me a whole new perspective of who I am and, and how I express my worship before the Lord. And, you know, oftentimes I forget that I, that we, that we, um, that we sit at the right hand of the Father, that we truly do worship in the throne of heaven, that it's not that we're just standing in a church on a floor in front of a bunch of people, I love how Pastor said, when it is as unto the Lord, that throne room experience is happening. And I, I got, that's what I already took away from the course of this questioning with my pastors. That's like, she's ahead of the age, you know, <laughs> kind of mentality. I'm like, he's right. And I don't, I don't ever want to forget that. Um, Oh, and then I, I asked him, one of the most special and meaningful things that you have ever done for me as a flag worshiper was to pray over, anoint, and bless my flags. You recognize my flags as a supportive tool in my worship. This changed my life dramatically. Um, with that in mind, has it been your overall experience that other pastoral leaders have this same intention? Uh, somehow the answer got split. Oh, okay, there's the answer. He answered, I believe that leaders should bless what God is blessing. You are a blessing to Kingdom Embassy Church, Rosie, along with your flag worship. This is not just my opinion, but several of our peeps have expressed the very same to me. I certainly believe that any church or ministry that incorporates flag worship for the right reasons is sure to experience greater breakthroughs, atmosphere shifts, and prophetic release if the people are filled with the Spirit, rooted and grounded in an understanding of God's Word, and are walking intimately with the Lord. Um, he said, it seems that those churches and ministries which are moving forward in unbridled worship and liberty of expression are a small remnant when it when compared with the larger body of Christ, even those who say they are spirit filled. So um, you could all unmute if you want to. That's kind of I know I may have a shorter class, but hopefully we'll have time for a lot of discussion. That was um, that's the the consensus of uh, my questionnaire with my pastor. I, like I mentioned, I'd hope to be able to hit him one on one. So I. Um, I didn't get a chance to really have that part, but um, so I I would love to hear some of your feedback now. What have your experiences been? I know that some of you are not in churches where your pastors are overseeing you, but um, just the overall um, experiential thing that you've experienced. And I just as before we go, I just I truly want to ask the Lord to bless my pastor because I am. I, like I said, I sorry. <laughs> I learned I learned so much about myself through having the privilege of um, talking, having this conversation with my pastor. And again, for me, the pageantry concept is just when I think about the state of mind and the state of spirit that I was in when I first came to that church, as I mentioned. And what he saw and what he still sees just makes me so grateful to be not just called, but chosen. Many are called and few are chosen to be a representation of a place in heaven that um, we get a chance to bring to others as we minister unto the Lord. They go with us. So anyway, back to you guys. <laughs> Comments, questions? 
So what have your experiences been? I love your openness, Rosie. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Are you in a church, Kim, with a pastor? In I'm a, like in the church. Yes, um, in a church that me and my husband had went to, I was trying to introduce, God had planted it on me to do the flag worshiping. And so I went to the pastor and had spoke to him and uh, he was sort of kind of close to it. And it, it sort of kind of put a damper on me because I already knew what God had said. So, I had talked to my husband, we bought the material and I had a friend that was able to sew for me because I'm not a sewer. <laughs> and so I had her sew the flags for me and told her about how I wanted it. And so then I had talked to one of my best friends and later on, she's like, I don't think it's for that church. You need to use them at home and then let the Holy Spirit lead you from there. So that's what I did. And I didn't really bring them out much because I'm like, well, you know, I just, just being by myself, I didn't feel comfortable for some reason, even in my own skin here in my own home. And God uh, told me, he said, what's the use in you having those flags if you're not going to use them for my glory? So then as I, whenever I feel prompted, I would go to my prayer room and <laughs> let the holy spirit lead me in the color because i had blue purple orange green and red and i would just let the holy spirit lead me and sure enough i had to go back and re mind myself google what the colors stood for and i wrote it on the stick so i could remember you know in case i ever doubted or forgot because i forget a whole lot then i can make sure that i was grabbing the right color for the right praise because I didn't want to do the blood when it was to do with totally resurrection or something, you know? So the Holy Spirit's just always led me. So then like as me and my husband was feeling led to leave that church, we was looking and we, we made acquaintances with people, but then God planted me back in the church with the pastor that was my previous pastor that was open to flagging and it's a small church in the like in front of the church it's really small and there's two big screens so i don't want to like have my flags up there in front of everybody because <laughs> i'm all, i'm always like self-conscious that it's going to be in the way of the people seeing the words so i just keep them in the back and i even had uh, a little like umbrella stand that I would put my flags in that we had bought just for that purpose for the flag. So I keep my flags like in the back of the church, but as the Holy Spirit prompts me, then I will go grab one of my flags and I'll stand in the back and do it. And uh, the pastor is very open to it, I believe, because I know him from before. And he's even grabbed a flag and went up front and praised and worshiped. Uh, and it really blessed my heart in a big way because uh, I was back there doing it. And I'm kid friendly, but I'm not like a teacher, <laughs> you know? And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I love the little kids, but I am never going to be a Sunday school teacher because that is not my gifting. No, you're gifting, know when to call it. <laughs> and here's these two little girls that are cousins. I'm talking like two and three years old that come up to me while I'm flagging <laughs> and want to praise and worship too. So I told them, you know, I pointed and told them, go grab you one. And so they were standing back there with me and it just... I brought me to tears because here's these little kids that gets the concept, you know, when I couldn't even get adults in the other church to get the concept. And so, uh, I let them flag with me that Sunday there in the back. And then the Holy spirit told me, you need to let them know what you're doing this for, that this isn't like for fun and kicks because they, they don't understand it. 
So the following Sunday, when I was prompted again by the Holy Spirit to flag in the back, they come up to me and I let them go get it. And then um, the Holy Spirit was moving me towards the front. And I'm like, oh, Lord, you know, this is not my comfort zone <laughs> being in front of people. I like being in the back and behind cameras. And so we just started going up front. And I mean, you would have thought that me and these two little girls would have practiced and rehearsed this flagging going up the front because they, I had them in front of me and uh, we went from the back to the front with our flags. And then I just knelt in front to where I wouldn't be again in people's way with the flags. And they was just flagging and worshiping the king. And it just really melted my heart. And so then um, the Holy Spirit told me, you need to let them know. So I brought them in close to me and shared with them, this is what we are doing the flags for. And it's to praise and worship the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And it's not for fun and games. So even to this day, I'm kind of like, really obedient with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, when it, when prompted to flag and not to flag. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Rosie. Oh, of course. Thank you for letting me share. <laughs> of course. Andrea, I'm interested in what your church experience has been. I have had, um, Various church experiences. I pastoral. The the <laughs> uh, well, lots of church experiences, but pastoral experiences. So we went right. from even I was in a church that had freedom of worship and and freedom to flag to um, a, a shift happening, and I'm uh, and not even being able they had decided that there were some approved flaggers and worshipers and and some were not and and i was not even though i had been teaching around the world worship flags and being called to the churches i was not allowed in my own church and i'll tell you <laughs> I will tell you that that was, <laughs> I really had to let that one sit and the, well, my heart with that because, and understand even though I'm called, I feel like anointed, um, that, that my identity was not in that and to lay it down. And if I wasn't, a, a lab approved worshiper uh, approved flagger then i didn't and to be honest i didn't flag often in the church um and for the the reason because space is premium <laughs> when you are in a church really of any size because if there's a lot of flaggers there's a lot of sticks and you need a really good huge section of personal space to flag and so um, I actually felt that the strength of my worship and what I added to the worship was the abandonment to worship and if I was concerned about hitting uh, people around me or small children there was a lot of freedom for small children to run around um, that I didn't want to it impeded my ability to actually enter into worship if I was wa I was watching everything. So I didn't actually worship a ter uh, an awful lot. It was just now that I couldn't, I all I felt the sting of that. And uh, you know what? I, honestly, I can with with absolute um, assurance of of healing. My heart was is not angry about any of that. What happened? I think. Uh, I just I just continue to worship on my own, understanding that God is going to make a way for me. A and then eventually, the very per the very person um, who had just made this unilateral decision, uh, one about a year later, I was at the back, uh, just standing, um, worshiping on my own, 
and uh, my arms were, my hands, my hands were up and my, my eyes were closed and I felt someone come and put a pair of flags in my hand. And Lord had, um, so I understood. So it was important. So even though someone else had said, oh, you can flag, I needed that because I had been shut down. I needed that person to, to, to invite me back in. And the Lord really opened up in a lot because of my, the submission that I had had for the church and in the whole experience and being rejected in that way. I, I know that the Lord increased the anointing on that. And so, yeah, that was not, that was, a, that was an interesting time, but really I had to learn that's not my identity. I'm a worshiper, whether I worship or not in church. Right. And, and, so, and so I think I'm glad that I'm, I'm glad I am glad that the Lord gave me that lesson and it has given me definite, like I've also grew up in churches where we didn't flag at all. And the church, the conservative church that I had been attending, they didn't want me to do it. I actually could go there by myself and worship when nobody was around because I was, I guess, some sort of a weird demonstrative leader. But um, as long as I wasn't around the people, <laughs> they were okay with that. Um, but so I know the, the pain of being rejected. I know, uh, and, uh, and currently I'm not in church, any churches that are, that I can fly, bring flags to. So I look for different worship opportunities where there's, you know, church citywide worship or church worship events that are open to it. And I do that. I think I know that Judy has, she has a pastor like, like pastor. Will. you want to tell us about your experience, Judy? That's a, can you hear me? Okay. I'm not uh, familiar with this technology. Yes, Rosie, God bless you. And as I was listening, uh, I was thinking um, God is, is so into flagging. And <laughs> when you were honored by your minister, Will, I have also been honored by my minister, Pastor Wayne, and Andrea has met him. And... Uh, had a workshop in our church and uh, he also pulled the flagging out of me like you said you know how honoring it was for your pastor to see that and he pulled it out of you that gifting and Wayne has done the same with me to the point where uh, I have also uh, you become a teacher, I believe, when you're flagging. Uh, you, you're uh, not realizing how many uh, uh, you're modeling to the children. And uh, in fact, Pastor Wayne's daughter and her little girlfriend flagged. They're eight years old. And I just always uh, am blessed when Pastor Wayne uh, comments that uh, I had something to do with his daughter and the anointing when she flags and her worship onto the Lord through it. And I just, I just sense that, you know, thank God for these ministers. Thank you, Lord, that they can see and they're not rejecting. And we have to cut off that spirit of rejection over so many churches that uh, want to, you know, control that we should have that freedom and the Lord's bringing that uh, uh, further up. And as you said about the throne at, at times when I am flagging in the front, I just feel like it's, um, I am doing this in front of the throne room and the Lord is watching and he is pleased and, uh, it is such a humbling and an honoring um, uh, worshiping of uh, that you get to partake. Uh, you mentioned three things though, and I only wrote down the two, Rosie. I wanted to get the third one, 
I just dropped my paper. You mentioned break, uh, greater breakthroughs, prophetic release, and I, for, I haven't got the third one. Can you please uh, give me that one? Yes. Let me go back. Um, break, oh, changing atmospheres. Changing, yes. Changing atmospheres. Changing atmospheres, breakthrough, and prophetic release. Yes. In fact, when Andrea did the workshop, uh, Pastor Wayne, the next morning, she did the workshop on a Saturday. Pastor Wayne said Sunday morning he could definitely feel a change in the atmosphere. It felt cleansed out the church, the atmosphere, and there was such anointing upon that. And we were delighted, Andrea, uh, Pastor Wayne still mentions that flagging workshop and uh, we were blessed by that thank you thank you judy how long have you been uh flag ministering at your church judy well the lord called me to that church about three years ago so uh i had flagged many many years before that and but i was not uh, privileged I, I don't know. I thought, I, I guess I saw it as a hobby. I didn't, you know what I mean? I just didn't, you know, the Lord had to draw that up in to a higher level. And, uh, you know, I knew I was worshiping the Lord, but I, did, I wasn't looking for any spotlight. I wasn't looking uh, to be seen. It's something like you said, you went up to the hill and worshiped and, and that's what it should be about, shouldn't it? It should never be about uh, being in the spotlight or people watching us. We're doing this onto the Lord, and through it, the glory goes to him. Very well said. Very well said. Jen, I know that you're pretty new to flagging. Are you flagging in church yet? Got told to. <laughs> and? I did. You got told to, and, and did you do it? Is what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> what? And the outcome? How did it go? Fine. <laughs> It's silly. I don't know what else to say. Why do you think you were told to? Because the chick who normally does it was teaching the little munchkins. <laughs> you flag more in, in, your, in your home as a general rule. However, t tell about being caught in a, you were telling me you were flagging in the field by a church or something recently? Oh, no, I asked permission to use their field to flag because it's more open and they invited me to their worship. There you go. That's amazing. And Julie, you're not in a church and ha haven't been for a little while. Is that, is that, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay. So you don't have the, the, <laughs> the issues? <laughs> well, I did. The previous church that I was in, um, I felt like God wanted me to kind of start initiating. And when I asked the worship pastor as well as the head pastor, I was flat out told that they were, um, yeah, I don't know that we, sh we really want to be doing that because we're not really sure what other people are going to think and we don't want to scare people away. That was basically what I was told. Wow. They weren't open to it. I really love what, what Pastor Will said about finding a church that where freedom in worship is already, he said, already established. I'm going to read that again. The leader sets the boundaries for the various expressions of worship in the house. If they're open to incorporate flag worship in their church, perhaps they could meet and introduce their pastor to others who have already successfully established it in their churches. I just, that's such a, 
such a minute that just ministers to my heart. It's like, it ain't happening where you is. Go find where there is freedom to do what you do. <laughs> and it's just, I mean, that's what I, that was my take on it. And I thought, gosh, you know, that is such an open heart to be able to, to shine. I mean, I just, that, anyway, that blessed me. Kariana, are you with us? I see your box and your screen and your mute. I am. I am in my winter hat right now. <laughs> We don't mind. I'd rather see your face, but that's okay, good. Let me see if I can put it back on. <laughs> oh. oh my God, you're adorable. <laughs> oh. And I got one of these too. <laughs> Are you worshiping in church? I am. I've actually been um, really, I feel really lucky um, with all that. I was. Um, Outside of organized church, we're singing worship music here. Oh, <laughs> a little bit. I was um, outside of organized church for probably over ten years, just going to um, meetings and um, just still being connected with the body. But um, when we moved to Walla Walla, we found a church, and um, and Kylan slowly started going again, and. Um, Pretty pretty quickly, the the pastors, um, they're a couple, and they went to my parents, and they're like, "What's what's her deal?" <laughs> me. They're like, "What's up with that girl? Tell us some stuff." And so when um, when mom and dad told them that they could dance and worship, they were like, "Tell her she can do that whenever she wants, whenever she's ready." Like mm. I was released way before I was even ready to be released like God just opened the door for me there and um so I actually had a Sunday where they were having an altar call and <clears throat> they were playing the you uh, you won't relent until you have it all and I set you as a seal and there's this moment where because I hadn't danced corporately for a long time and so I it was like assume the position. It's like I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna dance now because it was it was an altar call for something else. But it was like, are you are you ready to give them everything basically? And so then I started dancing in the church, and it was like my back, um, <clears throat> the top to the bottom. It was just like <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, I'm doing it again. <laughs> and I just ever since that, we, you know, we've changed buildings. People have come and gone, but I felt completely released there. And the just the blessing of my my pastor will say, like from pulpit, we're blessed to have a dancer, a flagger, and they want me to teach others. And like I, it, it's almost like embarrassing how wonderful it is. Because <laughs> I know it's not always easy. I know it's not. And so, but they, it's been, it's a great place for dancing and worship. <laughs> That's awesome. That's wonderful. Any other comments, questions? Did did any of the insight help revolutionize or give way to forward thinking for anybody? Okay then. <laughs> Well, I, you know, just for what it's worth, I just, when I heard the Lord gave me that title, Pastors in Our Praise, I knew that I, um, I was both a little anxious, a little nervous about uh, talking to my pastor, because I, I, I did not know any of these um, opinions that I never, I even asked him um, most, any of these questions before, so it was all new to me. The questions just sort of came out of a wellspring in my heart. It just mostly, again, based on um, my experience uh, interacting with other flaggers in my walk with the Lord, as it were. At, but for the greater part, um, because of comments that firecatchers have left in the community in the year or so that I've had the privilege of being a part of that. Um, and so I thought, you know, why not just go to the source of someone who could really bring an insight? As I mentioned, Pastor Will is 
Um, he's a musician as well. He's a drummer, um, very good one, and uh, often breaks out a prophetic song. And so I know that, um, like Kariana said, it's almost ridiculous how blessed I feel to be in that because, um, you know, when you're um, under the covering of a, of a worshiper already, when that mantle comes, comes over my life, it just uh, personifies what God is already doing. And so that's pretty, pretty awesome. And so, um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, the question, I, I, the most special and meaningful thing that my pastor had, had done, um, and this was just shortly, I hadn't been in my recovery place very long when just one day I was packing my flags up after church and uh, he said, he called me up, he said, Rosie, bring your flags up here. And so I just packed my, my bag up there and, and um, he said, I want to pray over you. I want to pray over your flags. And um, so I unzipped my bag and just kind of folded it out. He took anointing oil and just laid hands on them and laid hands on me at the same time and just laid that blessing upon them. And I just melts my heart still. I just, and I know for me that a lot of the emotional context is um, so experiential. Um, this part is like, this is the first time I really ever kind of talked about this part for me as far as congregational and what was happening there. And I don't, I could, I could say, I don't know if my pastor knew how bad I was when I started going there, but I know he did because he's just that kind of pastor. And um, he's the kind that when you walk in the door, the mantle of the church, I'm like, are my fingernails clean enough today to be here? Because there's a standard of holiness that, um, I don't know where I would be if God had not put me in a place where I could be, just as he said, in, in that throne room, um, worshiping unto the Lord in that expression. Um, because it did help me to want to get better. Uh, I know when I was up in the mountains, that was one thing I didn't, I had an audience of one. But uh, I began to realize, and the Lord helped me to realize when uh, I believe it was a, an Ephesians 6 moment where the Lord talks about um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and ruling spirits. When, when you're someone who doesn't remember those things and you're in territorial locations in a high place, I was literally up in the mountains in a high place. Um, and I knew, I took my grandson, David Michael, I've talked about him a few times in, uh, in the classroom. He is a seer, and I had taken him up there one of those times where we were just, just going fly crazy. He loved to come up there with Nana, and there was a bridge up there over a creek where I, where I would go. And he'd go up there, and he would literally tell me the spirit realm, exactly what he was seeing. He would see the spiritual warfare. He would see the angels of the Lord begin to move in battle when I would lift one flag or another. He would see the demonic realm be pushed back. He would see them up in the trees. He would see them on the ground. When we would cross this bridge, it was like this portal where this just this at well, this atmosphere was changing, literally, you know, this geographical atmosphere. And that's when I realized I had something <laughs> because I wasn't sober. When I would go there, I was not sober, but yet this atmosphere was still happening. The transition was still taking place in my life, and the anointing was increasing because I was up there doing battle with, you know, his, not, not literally, but you know what I mean, in the spirit realm. I was worshiping, and this battle was happening, and um, I know, I know uh, without a shadow of a doubt that that was strategic because it wasn't very long that I, um, when I lost my license and I was, that uh, I ended up going into inpatient uh, recovery. And that was, it's what put me on the road to recovery. And to this day, I, um, I thank God for how he used, you know, my Catch the Fire worship flags to literally, literally save my life because I was suicidal at that whole same time. Literally, I was. And, um, and I, I recognize 
what David had on his life when he was called of Saul to go and rectify that demonic mental stronghold because I lived it for so long. And so um, with that, be encouraged. If you're worshiping in church or not in church, I think our overall goal is that um, that audience of one, because there's never only one. There's never only one. Um, pageantry, when I think of that word, I mean, I think of parades and I think of getting to be on a float and throw candy to thousands of people who are watching and are celebrating. And, and pageantry reminds me of being, being utilized as one who is bringing forth the Ark of the Covenant into the earth in this day and age that, you know, the, the Davidic um, anointing where we've, I'm sure all of us at one point in our time have heard a word or experienced or known that um, the Ark of the, uh, or the, what do they call it, Andre, help me, the, the Davidic um, uh, covenant? Yeah, yeah, the covenant of worship through the Davidic has this context when, when the prophets talk about it. Um, anyway. Uh, Tabernacle of David? Yes, thank you. When, when we're the ones that are um, advancing the Tabernacle of David into the, into the earth, we have to get it somewhere. It has to have come, oh Jesus, it has to have come from somewhere. And so I, um, I know that through, you know, uh, I used to tell myself I, I was a parent educator and I used to tell myself, I will always teach best what I need to know the most. And I can honestly truly say being allowed to teach or impart or just bring this uh, classroom forward, I needed to know this as much as, as anybody, especially the concept of pageantry. Um, because the thing I do know about my pastor is he is very prophetic. And so when he uses those specialized words more than once, then I, I'm, I'm, I'm trained enough to pay attention to them. And so um, for me, I'm, I'm taking that away and I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with that. I'm gonna work with that concept more and more um, because it can only help to advance the mantle on my life. And um, we're going places. <laughs> God is using us. I think it was uh, one of you already had said, I think it was Judy, that uh, God loves flags. <laughs> and uh, it's a privilege to, um, to partner with all of you. and. Uh, Bless all of you and what you're doing to um, stay on fire and build forward to the kingdom of God in the earth. It's such an exciting thing to be called and anointed and uh, um, imparted to do. And I, I just I pray that no matter whether you have a pastoral covering that um, blesses and releases you to do it or not, that you don't allow that to be a contingent because as we've all heard, there's always outside <laughs> or inside your own home or school playgrounds. Um, we have so much more in our arsenal capability than this whole, you know, um, to worship in the front or worship in the back or my pet, you know, and, and I, I get a little snarky about it because that's not what it's about. It's not about this battle to be seen by your pastor and to be in the front or in the back, you know, all of that argument. I've heard a lot of it, and I'm sure most of us can attest to it. What? And the one that annoys me the most, my pets will let me stand in front. Well, then get your butt in the back and do what you're called to do. That, you know, anyway, I, <laughs> I get myself fired up when I, because forget it. That's just, <laughs> that's the one bad apple that's going to spoil the whole bunch. I mean, and I'll be the first one to see. You know, anyway, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you to Rosie for <clears throat> teaching us and to sharing with us your, your, your vulnerability and your story, helping us understand. Um, I just, I mean, I love you. You know that, but publicly, I just, I love you. I love how. Um, really cement our group. It's awesome. Hello. <laughs> and uh, I just want to say thank you so much to the fire catchers. I mean, we, the group is be what it is because, because of what you guys make it. Um, 
it's it's it is the greatest accomplishment of all of last year is creating this community and and um we just gave the space for it but you guys created it and uh this it, it it's incredibly humbling and awesome and I love it. And so thank you for the time that you've taken. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay warm. Ariana has got her hat. <laughs> um, love you guys. She's adorable. I, I want know. that hat. All right. But